Hey guys, I'm Sam Crack, and when I was out at my local salvage auction, I saw not just one, but two totaled C8 Corvettes. What's even crazier than this, the one that was in way worse shape just sold for $53,000. With fees, that's closer to $56,000. And under this crazy new salvage auction fee hike, if the buyer is in high volume, the out-the-door price is actually over $61,000. To put that in perspective, a new C8 Corvette starts at $60,000, new from a dealer with a warranty without a quarter of it missing. I can only imagine the person that bought this car either needs it to pay a ransom, needs it for their business development, is super impulsive, or Rod Wave's biggest fan. If you're unfamiliar with the name Rod Wave's, a rap artist who owned this specific C8, he got into an accident with it and wrote a song about his experience. 23 million views on this one. Not bad, Mr. Wave. I'm a pretty big sucker for salvage mid-engine cars, but not this much of a sucker. We've rebuilt a few of them, but my all-time favorite, which I drive regularly, is my rebuilt Audi R8, which costs literally half of what this destroyed C8 Corvette did at auction. And all in with repairs and upgrades my Audi R8 cost less than the final bid on the Corvette. It had a cracked strut tower which insurance estimated near $30,000 to repair and we fixed it in my garage with some bargain tool store magic, a professional welder, and 500 bucks. Now I'm not trying to hide from the fact that there are quite a few people who found the frame repairs on our Audi R8 questionable. If you go back to the video where all of this took place you'd think that the internet got their underwear in a bunch. And I firmly believe this wouldn't have been the case had they been wearing a pair of Tommy John boxers. Every pair of Tommy John's underwear has their stay put waistband and they're made from super soft breathable materials that won't bunch or roll and whether you're into boxers boxer briefs they have a pair of underwear with your name on it well really their name is on it but you'll feel like they were custom made just for you i'm also a huge fan of tommy john's day-to-day -day basics and loungewear they have a much necessary feature for me and those are pockets makes it really easy for me to hide my midnight snacks living in florida where it's always hot and humid tommy john has been key in keeping me comfortable while i'm outside working right now i've got on one of their second skin t-shirts and a pair of their cool cotton boxers and that's it and no you can't check me out but what i do want you to check out is tommy john's site by clicking the link down in the description box while you're there make sure you use code sam crack at checkout that's going to get you 20 percent off and free shipping and i got to give a huge thanks to tommy john for no more wedgies and for also sponsoring this video Man, things have changed considerably since I was here last. This row of cars are all new additions to the auction. That wall used to be where the coming attraction section was. So we could have expected to see the couple C8 Corvettes here. That's where we found the Lamborghini Murcielago. That's where we found a couple Bentleys in the past. Uh, but now they're sanitizing everything before it gets sold. So now it's time just to weave in and out of these cars, see what we can find that's cool, and uh, be on the lookout for not just one, but two C8s relatively new Mercedes-Benz S-Class, seen better days. Now, these are the sort of wrecks that I kind of get into because this looks really gnarly, right? But it's not terrible if you look at it. Basically, you wanna look up here, and we're gonna step over this puddle so I don't get all wet, but you wanna look up top here at the apron area. You also wanna look at your frame that's down in there. Now this aluminum piece here does look cracked off on the front and you would think that's bad, but this is just a frame rail extension. This is a bolt-in piece. You can see where it mounts right there to the actual frame rail. The expensive part of this rebuild is gonna be all the broken stuff in the front end here. A new fender, a new bumper, just basically everything. You know that these Mercedes are packed with technology. Um, but the rest of the car, minus the quarter panel, which we're gonna get to, if we can get through all this mud, uh, looks pretty good. So a little bit of damage on the rear door and quarter panel, of course the suspension is sitting low. So the quarter panel, the most concerning area because you can't remove it like you could a door. You could repair this with conventional paint and body. The door, I'd like to find a new door. Worst case scenario, if they're really expensive, you're gonna wanna look for a door skin. This door will come off. You'll replace the outside part of it. This shell is probably halfway decent still. And then again, you're gonna be able to repair this. Now anytime a car with an air suspension was in an accident, you gotta account for the worst. Make sure you price yourself out. A new pair of air shocks or air springs, a lot of the times the impact from the accident will damage those and uh, you gotta replace them and you replace them in sets. Otherwise, nice S-Class. I love these new platform S-Classes, just packed with all sorts of crazy technology, but they're expensive. It's a matter of if you can buy this right, get a good deal on it, repair it yourself. Well, you could make out decently. There are rows of really clean, nice cars here, but we are on the hunt for, ooh, an SS Camaro, not an SS Camaro, similar car. We are on the hunt for the C8 Corvettes. Now, what is this right here? 
I'm gonna guess from far back. It's got red brake calipers. I'm getting a little bit of a better look, so I'm cheating. Kind of that squared off back end. Is this a is this a Corvette? Yeah, this looks like a C7. Yep, a C7 Corvette uh, that was in something just horrendous. Um, the whole top is gone. Got the biohazard sticker on it. The whole front frame has been just ripped off here. This reminds me a lot of uh, Leroy. Now it looks like it's got kind of the base brake, so I'm assuming, yeah, this is not a wide body car. This is just your standard C7. It does have the seven speed manual. Now this is an incredible donor car from the standpoint that it is really destroyed, but your drivetrain components are all intact here. I mean, you got the engine sitting right up front here. Didn't look like anything came in major contact with the front end of things. Um, still sitting on four wheels and tires, which is pretty incredible. So you could roll it around, seven speed manual. Anyone looking to do a C7 swap, there's your car. Because of the pandemic, you know, a lot of people weren't driving, which equal a lot less wrecked cars. And so the salvage auction inventories were severely down, but for a very short period of time. I don't know about in your neck of the woods, but where I live, a lot of the cars have returned to the streets. And so the inventory from just accidents in general have uh, cropped back up. But there's a lot of other sources like dealers and off lease places selling now at the salvage auction. So the salvage auction, even though you see a lot of wrecked and crashed cars now, is not all salvage anymore. And so that's why it's really good to do your research. If you see something you like and it looks halfway decent, it could genuinely be a really good car. Now this is really interesting. C5 Corvette, somebody invested a lot of time and money into this. Look, the wheels are color match to the paint of the car. I love the color personally. I don't love the wheels. 63,070 miles, not bad. Look at this, this is insane. This has a custom ostrich seat interior. It's got ostrich seats, uh, automatic trans. Uh, everything was again contrasted with the yellow here. Someone really went to town. It's cars like this that stock aren't worth a lot of money, but again, you know someone put a ton of money between these wheels and the you know the spoiler the custom body work that went into it that custom interior work so you wonder what the car was really insured for because you know on your insurance you can always add uh extra insurance for custom stuff like i guess ostrich skin interior i really want to know if this car runs we got to try and start it up if you remember when I bought my uh, C6 Corvette, which I'll probably be referencing a lot well as we see these damaged Corvettes, it was missing right here. This is the PCM, so my car wouldn't start up. I do see something unplugged here, and that might lead to an issue, but either way, we gotta try and start this thing. Look at all the overspray everywhere. If it goes cheap enough, and the heavily modified stuff that's modified like this can, uh, you could pull the LS engine out of it, you can pull that ostrich skin interior and have <laughs> some parts for a really fun build. Oh, check it out. I walk right past the fact that this is a 500 horsepower Z06. This is awesome. Let's see here. It can't be a Z06. This is not as a fake Z06. <laughs> Look at this. There's no Z06 with an auto, but hold on. The key's in here. I see a key fob. Key fob. I see this. Oh, here's a key. Let's see. Nothing. Battery is probably really dead. I don't care. I'm putting on the watch list. I'm bidding on this guy. See that white car over there in the distance? It looks like a, a relatively new Lamborghini from here, but that is not a Lamborghini. That is C8 Corvette. We'll call that C8 Corvette number one. So this is a Z51 package with the three LT trim. Now, is it a convertible or no? This is a hard top. I don't know if the convertible is even out yet. And the majority of the body damage is contained to the front end here where we see the coolers bent in. The front bumper is just mashed off and it's really, really not bad at all. Tire, is it, uh, it's a bit low, but I don't even think the tire's flat, which is a really good sign. Now I do notice this from a distance. I gotta show you up close. This rear tire is split. The rim itself is bent. The actual edge of the rim is like pushed down and cracked. Can you see that there? 
this appears to maybe be a track related incident i mean this is just uh, from looking at it, my first inclination. Let me know if you think something different in the comment section, but either track related or it went off road. And yeah, look at the back corner there where our wheel completely just split off from the hub. We're gonna walk around again this little pond. We're gonna get a closer look. So the wheel spokes broke off from the wheel and then the brake rotor itself split where it all mounts to the hub. But if you look at the suspension, suspension's in great shape. I'd imagine you'd be able to use all the top end side of this stuff you need a new rotor new wheel obviously but uh probably a new knuckle or new hub to be safe and who knows if any of the the links or the bars down here are kinked which they very well could be this is it's not as bad as it looks see it looks terrible when you see a wheel sitting sideways with a bunch of grass in it uh, but this is a relatively simple fix. It's when you come around to the back stuff. Again, this isn't even a painted piece. This is just a rear dark uh, diffuser from Chevrolet. My guess is the toughest part about this would be sourcing it right now with what's going on with these cars. But you could see the lower part split and then probably an undercover right there. That thing that's sitting in the, uh, the water is an undercover that ripped off. So you probably have a damaged undercover, definitely a damaged diffuser. Otherwise, I wanna see if we can kind of sneak our way into this thing. Now here's the deal with C7 Corvettes, every single time of the salvage auction, I've never been able to sit in one. That's because the doors are electronic. Same thing with the C8. So if the battery is dead in this, we're not getting in it. Let's see what we got before we start. Oh, check it out. All right, guys, this car is really taped off nice, and this tape is some super strong stuff. I don't want to damage anything. So what I'm going to try to do here, open this again, I'm going to go from the underside, and I'm going to kind of just sneak my hand inside so you guys can get a good look at the interior of this C8. <laughs> look how much room I have. Can we get it done? Come on. A little bit more room. There we go. There we go. Here we go. All right, how was that? I didn't get to see it. You guys did. So if you haven't seen one of these C8 Corvettes in person, they are truly very beautiful. The pictures don't do them as much justice as in person. The presence uh, is incredible. I'm hoping there's a little bit less plastic on the next one so we can get a better look at it. Uh, this is an easy fix in my opinion, but even being an easy fix, this is a very difficult car to buy right now. People with money can buy this car. People with money I'm sure can source the parts to fix this car but is it going to be worth it or should you wait out just buying a new one? That's the big question here and it all comes down to what this car sells for. I'm currently on the hunt for a cheap Mustang and check it out, there's three of them. One, two, three. That's uh, 2018 or newer because it's got the facelift. This looks like it's a 15 or newer, it's a convertible. It is a 5.0 GT, which is good. But this also looks like a GT. I'm looking for something dirt cheap, maybe $1,500 or less uh, with some minor fixes. The 4.6 in these cars, not real desirable. A lot of cosmetic modifications, the bumper hanging, no big deal here. You know, sometimes you'll see a car from the front and then it will look like that from the back. This car overall, not in bad cosmetic shape. Uh, who knows mechanically what it's like interior looks really nice and clean remember they're cleaning all these cars so that's really all in nice shape big question is is it a true gt a lot of times guys will stick badges on these and you don't know and it is check it out three valve 4.6 this engine looks really nice and clean again i don't know how much clean they do underneath the hood got a battery that looks relatively new it's got what looks like uh, stereo wires or something running to it this steed cross brace air intake otherwise fairly factory and again fairly clean this is a good car to put on the watch list it's probably a non-runner but if it goes dirt dirt cheap if you don't end up using the body you could use the powertrain if the powertrain doesn't work well maybe you could use the body so that gt we just looked at is right here here's another gt this is again a 2018 or newer mashed really hard in the back and then we've got 
this nice 996 convertible. Now, I had the 996, I had the same color as this. This one hit up high, but still, when you've got these front tubs like this, there's a good amount of repair involved here. Uh, otherwise, the car itself looks like it was really well kept, only 58,000 miles, does have the less desirable Tiptronic transmission. The only time I kind of get into these convertibles, convertibles is when it has this navy blue top. I love this, and just look how clean it was. That's not to say this couldn't be repaired, but you're gonna need a little bit of skill, and a good amount of talent to do so. V-Tune replaced a very similarly damaged 996-911 on his channel by cutting out the entire front tub, basically all the way back to the firewall. So you take all the body panels off here, the fender, the hood, everything, the front trunk, and then you cut all the way back. There's two rails that run alongside of the tub, and there you go, easy as that, or difficult as that. The problem is on a car that's this old, and again, this is like the least desirable 996, this is just a really nice parts car. I mean, look at the wheels. The wheel set on this car by itself is probably worth four figures. You know I can't resist when I see a Range Rover. How about two Range Rovers? I'm done with this body style. I've had a couple of them, even though those are really, Really sweet set of wheels. This is a non-supercharged model, sitting low, 150,000 miles. Uh-uh, not gonna even come near it. We wanna look at this. This, latest body style, maybe they've had a facelift since then, but this is the big daddy range, no sport, and it looks, looks immaculate. If we go around, I don't see any damage on this side. Let's go around to the other side. Interior looks super nice, just looking at it. Black on um, black, does, Power tailgate work? No, battery might be weak. Black wheels, this is like a triple black car. 135,000 miles, someone really drove this car. And when I look at the sticker, it tells me that this is a dealer car, minor dents and scratches, and uh, 2015 from New Jersey. Let's see what we got. Really nice, fairly clean. One thing you get in a Range Rover, which you get in like really high-end cars, is this really thick plush carpeting. And again, it's just something that you don't even see really in like the Audis or the BMW. Some Mercedes have that thick plush carpeting. These are beautiful cars. This has the piano black trim everywhere. This strikes me as a wholesale car. If you look at the front bumper, the front hood, there's paint chips, and that's a really good sign that nothing was repainted. Uh, everything looks solid here. I like this. The mileage is a bit high, uh, but this is something I would heavily consider if I could hear it run. If you want to find yourself a car that makes you look rich and you don't want to spend anything on it, find yourself an Active Hybrid 7 Series. Every time I'm out at the salvage auction, there's one of these cars. Not the same car, by the way. There's always just one of these out here. Look at how loaded these things were from the factory. Screens in the back. These were long wheelbase cars meant to be driven in and they were hybrid, so they got like decent fuel economy, they were decently quick, but these are by definition mechanically totaled. You hear every YouTuber talk about mechanically totaled cars, and they'll say, oh, I fixed my mechanically totaled car for a few hundred dollars. Well, typically they're talking about parts and labor. This is a car that under 100,000 miles in some cases, the hybrid battery will die on it, and to get it ever up and running again, you gotta get a brand new hybrid battery. And as far as I know, a hybrid battery replacement is a five figure replacement. This thing uh, is, again, it's an interesting proposition if somebody could figure out how to remove and disable the active hybrid technology, because otherwise I think it's just a six cylinder seven series and it costs six figures new and is a parts car a few years later. Is it just me or do these new Hyundais look like older Volvos or newer Volvos? Either way, sharp car, 4,000 miles, a lot of nice new cars. Now you see the letter H right there. Letter H means that we are very close to C8 number two. It should be around here on this side somewhere. So we haven't seen the C8 yet. Oh, look, look at that short car right there. Darker roof. Yep, smash corner. That is the other C8 Corvette, but come on, we gotta check out this AMG casual AMG just hanging out right here. You can tell it's an AMG because the brakes, not carbon ceramic brakes, so I'm gonna take a guess and say that this is a 43 AMG. It's like the lower tier non-supercharger, non-twin turbocharged AMG models. Could totally be wrong here though. Let's take a look. And we have no clue. This 
could even be a phony AMG. Is it a phony? Yeah. Someone have to spend a good amount of money to get those brakes. We've got some nice aftermarket wheels and we've got a hood that is smashed in, but probably enough room for us to get under there. And well, I can't really tell, but it does look like somebody painted the top of the engine cover. Come on, we gotta get a good look and find out if this is a real AMG or not. Oh, it's, it's stuck. It's just completely stuck. Come on, any other clues as to this being a genuine AMG? Well, sometimes there's some AMG badging on the interior if it is a genuine one. Let's take a look. Oh, we've got AMG floor mats. We've got that two-tone interior. And I'm guessing this is a legitimate AMG. Yeah, the gauges have that kind of checkered flag look. But there's no power to anything in here. Anyway, enough of that. And on to this. There it is. This one looks way worse than the other one, but how bad is it really? We're gonna get a uh, really close and get an in-depth look at this car. This is also 3LT Z51 package, and there's no plastic on this one, so we're gonna see, finally, if we can, uh, what a letdown, you hear that? Clicking the button, we can't get in, uh, but you can see that spare wheel tire brake it's all right inside here that brake caliper looks like you will be able to reuse it now this color is really interesting uh, in person it doesn't look white i don't know if it shows up as white on the camera it's like a couple shades off of a nimbus gray or like a uh what is that color that rich has on his car called a nardo gray it's it's quite a few shades lighter than that but it's really an outstanding color again this car is just a stunner in person but really the stunner on this car is the damage we've got right here. Let's get a little bit closer and assess things. Now the front structure would be the number one concern for anybody who's gonna go into this car wanting to rebuild it. So taking a quick look at things, the first thing that catches my eye, see all these rub marks where the finish is off the metal surfaces here. Something pushed the tub of this car over. So this car has a very similar structure to like that 911 we just saw. It's got a tub that houses the frunk underneath the hood. And realistically, uh, even though you see these rails here, which are also uh, pushed in a bit, when you have a tub, the whole thing generally needs to be replaced when it's been compromised. And in this case, again, anytime you have a motion this way, it tends to tweak the entire front end over accordingly. So I see a, a frame rail pushed in here. I see the top apron area also uh, out of alignment. A lot of repair would need to go into this. Now it's a good amount of repair because you really got to take apart the entire front end and you got to chop basically the front end structure of the car off and you've got to get that replacement part. Remember this is a 2020 C8 Corvette. How many of these parts are available to regular consumers at this point? Nobody knows. but. It can be done, it's just a question of when it can be done and how much it will cost. Otherwise, the suspension area, it's all pretty straightforward. Even though the shock looks to be in a relatively good condition, everything here is gonna need to be replaced. The top uh, control arm is just missing, it's sheared off. Uh, the lower control arm is in pieces down there. The bracketing has all been destroyed, mangled. But the one redeeming factor here, even though the front structure up to here does look bad, this area into the firewall is actually really straight. The only kind of uh, negative thing I see is there's a bracket clearly that goes right here and it's been ripped off. Now, once you disassemble this car and see what it looks like on the opposite side, you might be able to weld repair that. Now, another thing you gotta concern yourself with when you're rebuilding a Corvette is what the frame material is made out of. Starting in the C6 generations, maybe even C5, they had an aluminum magnesium chassis on the Z06 and ZR1 cars. If you had a Grand Sport or a base model, you still had a steel structure. But regardless of whether this is steel or aluminum, the front tub stuff here just has to be replaced. That subframe is definitely aluminum. That's gotta be replaced. A lot of replacing on this car. We come up to the hood, all ripped up here. Front bumper ripped up with the front bumper comes all the components you gotta replace with a front bumper, all your brackets, your grills. A lot of time money will go into that repair. But once you're done with it, you can move on to, well, your door here, which has been just shredded. So this is a fiberglass door, fiberglass rocker, all destroyed, you're gonna need a new door, new rocker, but everything behind it is in perfect shape. Now remember, I pushed everything over this way, so it kicked the fender out of alignment. You can see the massive gap here. And unfortunately, when it did that, even though this fender looks pretty good from just a foot or two away, you've got paint cracks here. 
you've got a kink here. And remember, this is fiberglass, this isn't metal. There's a lot of new components that in my opinion would be required to repair this car appropriately. In the interior, got that front airbag that's been deployed. I don't see any other airbags deployed, not even the knee. I don't see anything uh, in the door or the seat here. That's all good news. Got the carbon fiber trim package in the interior. Yellow seat belts. I don't know if you can see all this. Also have yellow stitching on the seats. This one's a little bit more neutral compared to the last one we saw, but still a very nicely spec car. If you had to pick just the specs of the two cars, I know the damage of this one is substantially worse, but would you rather have the beige interior with the lighter color or the lighter color with the dark interior? I think I like this spec quite a bit better. I also like these wheels quite a bit better. The glass engine bay is awesome. You see a lot of uh, engine cover in that glass engine bay, but it still looks awesome. And this is basically a new car. It even has the carbon fiber appearance package. You can see the carbon fiber trim there. So a really well spec car. We've got the rear mounted camera there and just an immaculate C8 Corvette rear end. Super exciting to see two C8 Corvettes out at the salvage auction today, but we did cover a lot of this auction, way more than I've ever covered. This is pretty much known as like the elephant graveyard part of the auction lot. This used to be for cars that weren't on sale yet, but again, there's so much inventory. They've had to move things around, so I was lucky enough to really get the full a lot tour today. So besides the C8 Corvette, what did you guys enjoy seeing and what would you personally bid on? Let me know in the comment section below. I love the way this car looks. I drove my Audi R8 here today, which is one of my favorite cars of all times. And believe it or not, a used Audi R8 from like the year that I have compared to one of these uh, is similarly priced. If you're talking about a used Audi R8 to a MSRP new uh, base C8. And these cars just look way newer, way nicer. The interior is way more updated. Uh, so there's definitely a C8 in my future. If there's one in yours as well, be sure to hit that like button. If you're not already following me on Instagram, where I posted pictures of the lot tour today, I've got more of them to come. Uh, and I posted them there before anything went live here on YouTube. Well, follow me right here. Just click my link in the description box below. Guys, I wanna give a huge thanks to each and every one of you for watching today, and I'll catch you very soon.